I'm joined by Nadine. What's ya? Close enough. Yes. <laughs> Good to be here. You didn't like that. You didn't like it at all. You you pronounce it. What's ya? Smooth. He- Soft. Head of product innovation at OTA Insight coming to us. You're in Brussels, correct? Um, I am usually in Brussels. I'm calling in from Sweden as we speak. I managed to cross a border. Don't ask me how I did that. But um, yes, I am abroad, which is exciting. You, you crossed the border and then they stuck you in an attic. You said you were in an attic. <laughs> exactly. That's what happened. That's what happens if you break the rules. They- mm-hmm. Yeah, we won't be able to air this episode for another six weeks, but (laughs) how are you? Good. Look, um, over here in Europe, things are getting there, I would say. We're progressing slowly. There are vaccinations on the way. Yeah, I see the light at the end of the tunnel, that's what I can say. That's good. And uh, have you been busy? Yes. So I think that is the good news that actually we had things to do. I think the entire company, also me personally, I've been extremely busy. Um, we've launched a lot of well, products, new features, uh, there have been new initiatives. So it kept me out of trouble. It kept me busy. I, uh, I'm very happy here at my attic doing what I'm doing. <laughs> I just find that so funny. They just stuck you in an attic. It's like, get busy. <laughs> That's where you, inno- uh, where you innovate, you know, in a very confined environment. <laughs> yeah. So um, tell us about, I, I, I'm not sure everyone knows who OTA Insight is. Why don't you tell us about OTA Insight? Sure. So OTA Insight, for everyone who doesn't know, we're basically a BI provider for the hotel industry. So we gather a whole lot of data to help hotels make better revenue management decisions to eventually drive better performance in their properties. So we pick up anything that could help with that, turn it into nice to look at and actionable insights uh, for all types of roles on property level to use. So I would imagine, as you were saying, you've been busy diving into data. What kind of data um, should revenue managers be looking at post-COVID? Yeah, I know a, we're not exactly post-COVID, but man, we're getting yeah, so close. We're getting there. Let's assume we are. By the time you air this in six weeks, maybe we're post-COVID <laughs> already. So yeah. let's just pretend like like we're there. Um, no, look, it's been a very it's been very exciting months. I mean, for probably all the wrong reasons, but I think we've seen a clear we've seen clear faces in this pandemic. When it first started, I think the only data point that we were busy with providing, and I can't believe I'm saying it, but was literally the level of closed hotels in a market. It was the only thing people cared about. That's the one thing they looked at. Like, how bad is it getting? Are there still hotels that can close? Then, especially in the European markets, this has almost happened again at this point in time. Some last countries like Germany just opened up. Um, it goes almost city by city. So that has been a very unfortunate trend. But Again, this was really during the worst times. Now we are already pretty much past this. Most, most markets are open. And basically the main problem that we see coming back with our users or also people in the industry we speak to is the big question, here I am, my hotel is open. Um, when is demand coming back and where is it going to come from? And what does this mean to me and my strategy? How can we capture this? And that's where we've been very busy to look into what well, the good old revenue management toolkit. Uh, I think all of the good stuff, like on the books, data, rate data, this won't go away anytime soon. But I think there is a new new kit on the block and a whole new tool you can use. And that's really what well, we call it upper funnel data. So this is where market demand probably first shows. And this is when the users are starting or the guests are starting to look for a destination. They are starting to compare rates. So they're really up in this funnel of, warming up to traveling again and that's where you can really spot very early on that something is happening in your market and when this is most likely to convert as well so that's data we've been very busy with and we see our users at least using to track recovery to understand also you know who this new traveler is so in the i know how it is over in the states but here in europe it's been 
it's been quite interesting to monitor the moment one border opens and one closes. Well, you have this, this change in the market, right? You have these new travelers coming that might have never come to your destination before. Now they're coming just because that's their only choice. So you have this whole idea of the split between domestic travel, international, business leisure. There are people who, who travel for business, but they bring their whole family just because they can work remotely. It's a whole different segment, whatever we call it. So we kind of all have to relearn our markets and to start where the, the consumer starts. That's probably a very good place to, to start educating yourself who actually wants to come and how we can have then convince them to come to us, right? Stay with our hotel. Where, where's that data coming from? That, uh, what you call it, up, upper funnel data when, when they start to search for where to go? Pretty much. Yeah, I mean, I think if you think about the typical purchasing funnel of, well, maybe yourself when you last traveled, whenever that was, um, we go through these phases, right, of basically deciding that we want to go on a trip. So we were inspired on some site, then we start to shortlist where do we actually want to go? Do we want to stay in a hotel, maybe in an apartment? And all of these these search phases and everything we do is now happening online, right? This is not like me with my dad 20 years ago, we were in a travel agency flipping through pages and no hotel could know that I'm looking at that page at any point in time. But now all of this is basically recorded. We're lucky this way that we have these digital footprints. And that's what is very powerful to leverage because we can really see what's really happening and what these guests are actually looking at and and who they're looking at as well, right? It's the flip side of this. So who are they, who else would they want to stay with, if not us? How should revenue managers uh, redefine their competition using this type of data? Yeah, so I think that is actually a topic, I've seen this on coming by on LinkedIn a lot these, these last couple of weeks. I think it's really something that many hotels are waking up to, the fact that their static comm set from 20 years ago is maybe not the true comm set anymore. And especially with this new traveler coming, looking for different things, they're comparing hotels in a completely different way. And this is also where this data is very powerful because not only do we know that there is maybe demand and where it might be coming from, but we also know, right, who, which properties these travelers are looking at. And that helps us to understand from a consumer point of view, who are we actually being compared with? And am I as a hotel pricing myself against the right comp set? Do I have the right comp set in my benchmarking report? And am I actually targeting my strategies and messaging towards the right type of people? And I think that is really where I personally find this very exciting. We spend a lot of time on this internally as well, because the, this comp set concept, right? It's so ancient I want to say it's like it's this holy grail of revenue managed but no one wants to touch the concept but in the end of the day what we also see is that it can be quite dynamic depending on really which traveler is coming so think about seasons leisure business this might change and I think as as software companies we're all a little bit also guilty of having accepted this manual input of these five competitors for a little bit too long. The, the reality is much more dynamic and that can also really bring opportunities for the hotels. Also post pandemic, right? This is not only now. Um, we got about a minute. What is the big opportunity with this data? The big opportunity, um, I would like to fast forward maybe a year or so. So let's say pandemic, we all want to get out of the pandemic. So it's great to see when your demand is picking up, where it's coming from, very powerful to do this. I think the big opportunity really also lies in how you can combine or align functions when you look at this data, because it's not only from a revenue point of view, it's often about optimization. But this data can also be used for targeting. So you can really involve your marketing teams, your digital teams for messaging, for um, putting the right offer out there via the right channel. And that's something that usually happens in silos. But with this type of data, you can really well, align these, these efforts and have a very um, yeah, aligned commercial strategy probably for the first time. So I think long term, there's a lot of potential, even way, way post-pandemic. Thank you for joining me, Nadine. Thank you. Speak yeah. soon.